Now the title talks about ag is bad for whitetails, but before you get mad at me too much, obviously some of the best whitetail country in the world surround its ag land. Ag land surrounds some of that best whitetail habitat. And ag is bad for whitetails when it comes to providing a daily food source and attraction around your parcel. If you have a parcel located within ag land, you are blessed. I'm not saying that agricultural settings are bad for whitetails, but if you rely on those ag lands to provide the daytime, daylight food source for your private parcel, and unless we're talking about a five, 10 acre, 20 acre chunk of this little cove of incredible whitetail habitat goodness that's surrounded you know, I'm thinking Northern Ohio and some of those places like that where you have a mile in any direction, that 20 acres might represent the largest chunk of habitat in the entire area. And so you're gonna have deer flocked there because there's such an overabundance of ag land and, and lack of cover. But I want you to think about this. When you have ag land surrounding your parcel, let's say you have a 40, 50, 60 acre parcel. If you rely on that food source, I like parcels that have tree stands all around them. Tree stands located where you can hunt the outside edges of those parcel, that movement, let's say you have a cabin on the inside, you can hunt on the left side, the west side of the cabin, the north side, the east side. You can actually hunt your entire parcel. You have tree stands that relate to your entire parcel. You have bedding areas on your land. You have travel corridors that relate and relate to each other, that complement each other. You know, again, going back to you're building a house, you have the kitchen, you have the living room, you have the bedrooms, you have the hallways. You have the places where deer eat, feed, move, sleep, water, mock scrapes, travel, the whole pattern. If you rely on ag food or ag to provide the daily food, the daytime food for your deer, then you, you really fall into a trap of relying to the whims of the rotations of the agricultural production in your area. And for that, you have a very inefficient parcel and you're really subject to the whims of the farming activities around you. And I'll give you some examples. You can have ag on your east side and west side, north side, maybe it's not on the south, but you have it on those three sides, west, north, and east. You might have bean production on one side for one year, great early season hunt on that side. Let's see the season it opens this third Saturday of September, just like it does in Wisconsin. Might be a great hunt. You might have corn on the other side, great hunt in November, but they pick that corn. We have great combines, farming equipment nowadays where there's not a lot of spillage. So here you have a property that has maybe corn on the north and the west side, beans on the east side, and you have this situation where great hunting early around the beans, great hunting November around the corn, but then it's all gone in December and half your property is dead because after the beans turn brown and they pick it early October, you're not left with much else. So the stands against that bean field might be good in the early season, terrible uh, during the late season, the bedding areas that relate that to the travel. And then those, that cornfield on the other side might be terrible, either before it's picked or when it's picked, might be great. After it's picked, might be great for a short period of time. But those stands and bedding areas are not working for you in the early season. So you create a very inefficient parcel. And bottom line is, there's not a lot of food left in those ag fields by the time it gets in November, December. So I see this over and over again when I travel around the country in ag parcels, the deer actually leave in December, late November, they're gone. There's no food source left in the, the fields are plowed. You know, maybe one year they can't get to the beans and they're still standing in December. You might have the best property in the area, but that only happens every eight, 10 years maybe in, in your area. So it's something you can't count on and for that you have zero control when it, when it comes to creating a quality herd balancing that herd and of course creating a quality hunt because if you don't have a quality herd you're not going to have a quality hunt you can't have a quality hunt without a quality herd the two go hand in hand you have to have it ag land is very bad because you cannot control the deer that are using your bedding areas traveling from bedding area to bedding area traveling by your tree stands around the entire parcel and your property might be good for a few weeks on one side, maybe a few weeks on the other, but then you have these dead spots where your property is not working for you. I want your entire property to work for you. Let's face it, we have small properties. This one's 30 acres of cover, 10, 12 acres of field. I don't have a lot to work with, so I need to maximize. I need to make sure that this entire property is working from opening day to the end of the season. 
I can't afford to have a half or two thirds not working for me at that time of the year and you can't either. And that's where having food plots, having a quality food source that represents the bottom of the funnel of day, daylight movement. You don't care where they're at in your property as long as they can use your entire property. Whether it's bedding area, bedding area, travel in between, water holes in between, mock scrapes, central bedding, timber stand improvement, and all those deer come into, in this case, three food plots out in the middle out here that they come to and then funnel off to ag during the dark. Dark time is a great time for those deer to be out in the ag fields, but I want you to control the daylight movement to food plots, high quality food sources, every single day of the hunting season on your land. And if you do that, all your food plots are planted the same, same diversity. In this case, we're gonna have brassica on one side, we're gonna have peas, oats, and rye on the other side, we might even plant late planted beans in, in, in that mixture, meaning uh, early August. But I want to have, if I have that mix in this plot, I want it on the other three on this small parcel right here because then various doe family groups are coming to different food plots every single day, different bucks relate to those does. I have an entire property that's working for, for me. In fact, a 30 acre parcel can be very high powered in an ag area like this, especially when I have these food plots because I control and ultimately control the daylight focus of the mature box in this entire area. They come to this parcel and they leave after dark. Ag at night is great. I want the deer on the ag at night because I don't want them on my food plots at night. Consider that ag is bad for whitetails when it comes to creating a daily food source unless you have some of those very, very small, tiny micro parcels where you wouldn't have room for a food plot. Consider adding a food plot this year to your ag land parcels. Consider your power and the amount of power that you can have and the potential to control that daily deer herd. And you can truly represent deer feed five times in a 24 hour period. The first feeding is when they first get back to the bedding areas in the morning and they're there, they can stand up, they browse within an acre. The second feeding is when they do it four to five hours later, lunchtime, early afternoon. And the third and most important feeding of the day is the afternoon food source that you should be providing on your land. I don't want those deer on my neighbor's ag fields the hour before dark because that gives me zero control over that entire herd. It gives someone else that control. I want those deer on my property and then releasing after dark and feeding that fourth and fifth time on my neighbor's ag fields, on my neighbor's food plots if they're hunting invasively. I want them off my property at night and then really focusing on that daylight deer herd. If you focus on alternative food sources other than the surrounding ag fields, you control and have that opportunity to control the daylight movement and ultimately you can be the herd influencer in the neighborhood. It's all about influence. You can be that herd influencer in the neighborhood without that daylight movement, without that daylight food source on your, on your land. You're not really much of an influencer. You, you don't have that ability to influence. And I want you to be a herd influencer this fall going into the season. I want to hear about it on my comments down below on the YouTube channel and hear that feedback. I put all of these strategies together for you on this channel because they help, they work, they've been proven for not only decades, but for hundreds of clients. I want them to work for you, whether you ever hire me or not. This is all free information and content. I have over 600 whitetail articles on my website. I hope you're checking out too. And thank you very much for subscribing, for your engagement, for your comments. I love the community that this channel has created. I love the, the, the guys and the, and the posters and the responders and the subscribers that are on there all the time with feedback. It helps me provide more content to my clients when I go see them for my books. And most of all, I just love hearing that this stuff works for you. Thank you very much.